In this presentation, we are going to look at the gamma distribution. Now, the gamma distribution is used to model a continuous random variable, so it's a continuous probability distribution, which takes positive values. The gamma distribution is widely used in science and engineering to model a skewed distribution. Now, the parameters are, are as follows. We have the shape parameter alpha and the scale parameter theta. Now, I just call it alpha and theta in this case. In other resources, such as textbooks and so on, they might become up as N and K or alpha and beta and so on. And we would use this notation here to describe a, a gamma random variable called X with the parameters alpha and theta. So down here we have the probability distribution function. Now I'm going to use it a bit in this video, but I'm not going to talk about it talk about it itself directly. I'm going to use it in two calculations where we're going to calculate the expected value of the mean and the expected value of the, or the variance and so on. But it has this general shape here. So f of x equals 1 over theta to the power of alpha times the gamma function of alpha. So that's a fraction there of those two terms, times x to the power of alpha minus 1 times e to the minus x divided by theta. So for those values there, and that's that's good. So I just actually, the key point here is actually that this uses the gamma function, okay? And I'm going to talk about the gamma function now. So this is the gamma function here. This is the key definition for it. Now, this is the key definition for it in terms of integrals. There's also the definition for it in terms of factorials, which is straightforward enough. And I'm going to sort of skip for the purposes of this video, for the purposes of keeping it short. But this is a sort of an important matter here because we're going to need this and, uh, and sort of have to work with this uh, and so on. Just as a remark, it's denominated in terms of the exponential of minus x, okay? So not in terms of the exponential of minus x divided by theta or anything like that. So what we need to do is sort of uh, ex make an abstraction or an extension of this expression here such that we can use it when we're dealing with the probability density function later on. Now again, the probability density function is essentially has a, comp comprises minus x over theta. Okay, so what happens with this theta? How do we sort of sort that out? So essentially there's an alternative specification for the gamma function, okay? Uh, just to start off, I'm gonna sort of go through this fairly quickly, but what we're gonna do is, using the expression above, we're gonna divide both sides by the gamma function of alpha. So we end up with one equals the integral from zero to infinity of one over the gamma function of alpha times x to the power of alpha minus 1 times e to the minus x dx. Now what we're going to do is use a change your variable approach. Now this is the key thing here. What we're going to do is let x equal to y divided by theta, and hence dx dy is equal to theta to the power of minus 1, and therefore dx is equal to theta to the minus 1 times dy. So what we're going to do there is take that expression here, this one here, and what we're going to do is use that change of variable approach. Now just remark, this will keep the value 1, but I'm just going to sort of re-express it here, but just later on, it takes the value 1 later on, okay, just remember that. So looking here, what we have here is just, let's just restate our expression here, x to the power of alpha minus 1, that now is y divided by theta to the power of alpha minus 1, and we can split that up as y to the uh, power of alpha minus 1, and theta to the power of, well, it's a fraction, so we just uh, invert, uh, negate the sign. So if it's 1 over theta to the power of alpha minus 1, so that's the same as theta times theta to the power of uh, 1 minus alpha. Okay? So this here is e to the minus x becomes e to the minus y divided by theta. We don't really do much with that. And then finally, dx becomes theta to the, pow the power of minus 1 times dy. Uh, so we have the dy here, but what I'm going to do is bring that theta to the minus 1 up beside theta to the power of 1 minus alpha. Essentially what happens there is I end up with, if I multiply them out, I end up with this expression here, x to the power of, or sorry, theta to the power of minus one, uh, alpha. Okay? Uh, everything else actually is starting to take the shape that we want, okay? 
y to the power of alpha minus 1 times e to the minus y divided by theta dy. So it's essentially this part here is what I want to work with. Okay. And remember, that's equal to 1. So I've, I take both of these expressions out. Actually, I, sh I meant to take both of them out. Okay. Uh, 1 divided by theta to the power of alpha and 1 divided by the gamma function of alpha. So if I multiply 1 by both the bring them over to the other side of the equation, which is say multiply 1 by the gamma function of alpha times theta to the power of alpha, we get this expression here. So this is a very important identity for working with gamma functions, essentially. And it's worth spending a lot of time on this particular thing, just to sort of, because it actually makes the calculations going forward much easier. So we're going to calculate the mean and the variance of the gamma distribution. So first off, we're going to show that the mean is equal to alpha times theta. Okay. Now, I'm not going to sort of go into this notation too much in this particular instance. This regards to stuff that will come up later on. But it will just help us sort of dovetail back to, when you see those videos, just dovetail back to what you have should have seen before, which is uh, this direct derivation of the expected value. Okay, so the derivation of the expected value of x, that is the integral of x times the probability density function, okay, dx, from 0 to infinity. Okay, that's the sort of key definition there. So there we have, well, there we have x, okay, and there we have the probability density function there. Now, there's a couple of terms that are not uh, denominated in terms of x, so they're essentially constants as far as this is concerned. So we'll just bring them outside the expression there, the integral. So we have x over here and x to the power of alpha minus 1, and essentially that's how what we will state there x to the power of alpha plus 1 minus 1. Just add the two of the powers of both together when we multiply them out. And I'm going to keep it as x to the power of alpha plus 1 minus 1 because that makes it explicit that what this expression here is is the gamma function of alpha plus 1 times theta to the power of alpha plus 1. So that's using that alternative expression of the gamma function there. So that's a very quick simplification so that justifies all the time we've spent previously. Now remember, we have our constants here, and again we have one over t to the power of alpha times the gamma function of alpha, okay? So we have, let's just look at that there, the, the theta to the power of alpha plus one divided by t to the power of alpha, that just leaves us with theta above the line, okay? And the gamma function of alpha plus 1, that is alpha times gamma function of alpha, okay? So that just reduces out, so we're left with am alpha times theta, okay? Um, there's a couple of things there regarding the gamma function that I'm not going to get into, but just actually how they work in terms of the correspondence with factorials. That's important there. That's what's going on there. Straightforward enough stuff. Uh, the gamma function of alpha plus 1 is essentially alpha factorial, okay? But I'm not going to spend too much time on it here. Now, let's look at the variance. I'm just going to pause for a second. So, what we want to do now is show that the variance of the gamma distribution is equal to alpha times theta squared. Okay, so previously we just saw that alpha, the mean is alpha times theta. So, what we have to do in the first instance is actually calculate the expected value of x squared. And it's the same approach that we used previously. Sorry, the same approach. The expected value is equal to the integral of x squared times the probability density function there. That's the probability density function. So x squared, and that's the probability density function. Again, let's take this constant term out in front of the integral. And so we have x squared times x to the power of alpha minus 1. There we have it there. x to the power of alpha plus 2 minus 1. So we're just going to leave it as that. So it makes it, makes it explicit what the next step is. e to the minus x divided by theta dx. Okay. So this entire expression here can be expressed as the gamma function of alpha plus 2 times theta to the power of alpha plus 2. So that was very quick. So that is 
means that same sort of thing again. Um, let's just divide it out. Um, the gamma function of alpha plus 2 is equal to alpha plus 1 times alpha times the gamma function of alpha. Okay, so the gamma functions cancel out essentially there and that leaves us with alpha plus 1 times alpha and what we also have here is that's just supposed to be part of that so essentially the expected value of x squared we end up with alpha times alpha plus 1 times theta squared okay so we just wrap it up now and essentially calculate the variance and the variance is the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x to be squared okay so we just found that the expected value of x squared is alpha times alpha plus 1 times theta squared. The expected value of x to be squared, the expectation squared, is alpha theta to, uh, to be squared. So essentially just simplify this expression out, and we should end up with alpha times theta squared, and that is the answer we're looking for. Uh, there's a couple of things here, again, that just dovetail with what's coming up later on, cumulative, uh, cumulative general cumulative generating functions and so on so we won't we won't get too much into that that just sort of should be familiar uh, once you've seen some stuff later on okay